macOS Big Sur. Holy smokes. Okay, so just like just like with iOS, watchOS, and iPadOS, Apple also releases a new version of macOS every year at WWDC in June. Last year, we had macOS Catalina, which was filled with bugs and stability issues, some of which still haven't been fixed to this very day. So I was honestly expecting the next macOS version to just be a stability improvement with bug fixes and everything like that over Catalina. And since we haven't had any leaks at all on the next version of macOS, pretty much the entire tech community was assuming that this would be a very small update. But instead, macOS Big Sur is actually the biggest macOS update that we've ever had in years. And probably the biggest update that macOS got ever since the introduction of macOS 10 in 2001. So, without any further ado, get those snacks ready, get all that popcorn, those drinks, and everything you need, and here is my experience with macOS Big Sur. Oh, uh, do you want to get those badges? You know, the, those really cool badges next to your name? Well, in that case, definitely consider becoming a member by clicking the join button down below. You support a channel and you get these really cool badges next to your name, which also evolve the longer you've been a member for. So thank you and enjoy those cool badges. Okay, so by far the biggest change that we got with macOS Big Sur is the new design. Unlike iOS, which usually gets a decent set of improvements every single year, macOS is a bit more conservative. For example, all versions of macOS from macOS 10.0 to macOS 10.9 or macOS Mavericks have looked almost identical. Then, in 2014, six years ago, Apple released macOS 10.10, .10, also known as macOS Yosemite. This was really the biggest design change that the Mac ever got, at least up until that point. Gone was the skeuomorphism that Steve Jobs was such a big fan of, as now we got the exact same design language that we got on the iPhones and the iPads with iOS 7 back in 2013. We got a design that featured a heavy emphasis on transparency, to the effects and simplicity overall. And I was actually a really big fan of this design. Literally had zero issues with it, uh, but I always felt that it could, it could be improved. And uh, yeah, it definitely was. With macOS Mojave in 2018, we got the dark mode, one of my favorite features ever in any macOS update. And now in 2020 with macOS Big Sur, Apple has redesigned macOS pretty much entirely all over again. And essentially we now get an even more iOS-like experience and look, with things such as Control Center, the notifications and the widgets panel that we got in iOS 14, as well as system toggles that look exactly like they do on iOS. I'm actually a massive fan of this design. I do think that it looks absolutely gorgeous. However, I do have some concerns that I do want to raise, uh, which hopefully Apple will address by the time macOS Big Sur releases to the public. Okay, so concern number one is the contrast. So on macOS Catalina, which is the current macOS, all the top bar elements are perfectly visible. So everything looks pretty great. I've never had any issues being able to identify the UI elements. However, on macOS Big Sur, the UI elements are basically all over the place. The top bar especially makes everything barely even readable. The contrast is almost entirely gone. Not only that, but Apple has also added more space between the icons in the top bar, meaning that for people like me, who have a ton of icons there from multiple utility apps that I use, many of those icons would not be visible anymore due to the extra spacing required. Okay, my second concern is in terms of that new control center. So while I do like a lot how it looks and how it works, I mean, now you can even control the screen brightness from there, which is really cool and useful, and also things such as the keyboard backlight, which I think is absolutely brilliant. However, I just think that it just looks and behaves way too much like iOS does, which I wouldn't normally have a problem with if this device had a touchscreen, but it doesn't. Whether this means that Apple will release touchscreen Macs in the not too distant future, we do not know. But what we do know is that Big Sur behaves a lot like iOS. And using Big Sur with a mouse in a lot of UI elements, it just doesn't feel right. Now, speaking of the control center, there are a lot of things that I do actually like about it. For example, having the control center means that you no longer need individual icons in the top bar for things such as Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, because now you can keep all of those icons in the control center, which means that yes, you can indeed clear up a lot of space in that top bar. But probably my favorite thing about the new control center is that you can even drag elements outside of that control center and onto 
the top bar. So if you ever wanted to have things such as, let's say, the not stir mode or even airdrop in the top bar, now that isn't possible. And just like how on iOS you can have third-party apps in the control center, I am predicting that this will also be possible later uh, in macOS as well. Okay, next up, widgets. I do love them a lot. They're absolutely brilliant uh, and they do look and work exactly like they do on iOS 14. Meaning that you can just add different sizes of a widget, usually small, medium or large, and they're also fully interactable with. So yeah, big fan of widgets. My only complaint here is that I wish you could place them on the desktop as well, rather than having them constrained in that separate widget panel. Essentially, just like you can on iOS 14, I think that being able to just drag them out of the widgets panel and onto the home screen would be ideal, especially on a Mac, since you have a much larger display to play with when compared to, let's say, an iPhone. Then notifications have also been tweaked. Rather than getting a massive list of all of your notifications, they are now grouped into a stack which you can then expand to access all of those notifications from that app. Again, I just wish that they worked like they currently do on iOS or iPadOS. And by this I mean that on iPadOS, for example, you can just bring the mouse to the top portion of the screen and the notifications panel would drop down. Apple is aiming for consistency between macOS, iOS, and iPadOS, so I think it would be great to have notifications work in the same way as they do on Apple's other platforms. And speaking of grades, Daniel from the future here, by the way, how great is it that you can now get 70% off? with NordVPN by using the link below. In case you don't know what a VPN is, well, with NordVPN, for example, you can watch Netflix US content even if you're not physically located in the US. Not only that, but you can basically access any region-restricted content that you want thanks to NordVPN. And aside from that, NordVPN makes it safe and secure for you to browse the web no matter where you are and no matter what type of connection you have. So even if you're on a public Wi-Fi network, NordVPN will encrypt your entire connection by channeling you through an encrypted tunnel, meaning that no one would be able to scoop into your network traffic and get access to your personal details and transactions. NordVPN works on iOS, Android, macOS, Windows, Linux, yeah, pretty much anything really. And it even works as an extension in Chrome or Firefox. Get a three-year plan with 70% off plus an additional month for free at nordvpn.com slash zltnord or simply use the coupon code zltnord. Link in the description as well. And thanks again to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Okay, now my third concern is when it comes to the UI design. So if you take a look at, let's say, Finder, you can probably tell that it's been completely redesigned. The buttons are all in the window to the right, while the side panel alone is on the left, and we have no controls in that one at all. And I really do like the way this looks, but take a look at the spacing between the traffic light controls and the top of the Finder window. And now let's try to, let's say, connect to a server, so Command plus K, and take a look at the spacing now. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's completely off. So now let's try to open about this Mac. Yeah, same thing. Spacing is now completely off as well. So what about, let's say, I don't know, calendar? Well, spacing is completely different from Finder and system preferences. Speaking of which, why is it still called system preferences and not settings like it is, you know, on iOS. And I could just keep adding to that list. For example, Siri, while it has been indeed redesigned on iOS and iPadOS, on macOS it still uses the exact same look as it did in macOS Catalina. So yeah, as you can see, there are many things left that Apple needs to polish by the time macOS Big Sur releases. Now, concern number four is when it comes to the icons, and you're probably very aware of this if you've seen all the memes. So in macOS Big Sur, Apple decided to completely redesign the system icons to essentially bring them more in line with iOS. And I couldn't agree more. Like, I don't know why we haven't, uh, I don't know why they haven't done this before and why we've had so many different icons throughout the years, but you know, this is finally fixed now, at least to, to, some, uh, to some extent. Now, my problem here is that some of the icons simply look atrocious. Like, for example, while some icons look identical to how they look on iOS, like the calendar icon, notes, reminders, some icons have this weird 3D look to them, like messages, mail, FaceTime, the App Store, and so on. And they also have this inner shadow. I'm honestly not a fan of this design. I think it looks pretty bad, especially if you take a look at the settings icon, uh, sorry, system preferences, or that horrid battery icon in the setting, sorry, yeah, system 
Gotta get used to that, system preferences. These icons look like when you add drop shadow and bevel and emboss in Photoshop, if you know what I'm talking about. Now, I wouldn't necessarily be that critical of the icons if they were all consistent, but they're, they're not. They look as if each of these icons was designed by a completely different person and none of these people were ever in touch with one another. And finally, my last concern, number five, is when it comes to the launch pad. So first of all, why is this thing still called the launch pad instead of the app library like uh, it is called on iOS? Because it's essentially the exact same thing. Anyway, my problem here is that it's still as painful and as slow when it comes to organizing your apps. Like on iOS, you can indeed drag multiple apps at the same time and place them in folders. But on macOS, you have to do it one by one, which is just a pain to do, especially when it comes to using it with a mouse. And even a bigger pain if you have loads of apps installed you know, like, uh, like I do. Not even to mention how frustrating it is when this happens. Like, really? <sighs> Come on, Apple. Like, how am I supposed to? Yeah, how, how do you even do that? Like, you have to move a folder to the left and then, yeah, <sighs> this is so bad. Okay, now there are a few smaller features which I did find to be quite interesting and cool, um, which I do want to mention. So first of all, I really like how every UI element has curved or rounded corners now. But this also means that everything looks off when you compare those corners to the straight edges or corners of the actual display of your Mac. Now, because of this and the fact that the iPhone and the iPad, they both have curved corners, I do believe that the next Macs, starting with the new 14-inch ARM MacBook Pro, will indeed come with curved corners as well. Well, rounded corners, actually. Also, remember the uh, battery life indicator, which also told you exactly how many hours of battery life you had left? Well, Apple actually removed that a while ago, a few versions of macOS ago, but then now it seems to be back in Big Sur, uh, which is quite nice. The scheduling feature, which has been buried deep down into the settings, is much more visible now uh, in the battery section, and you can even see your battery usage for the past day or the past week, just like you can uh, on iOS, and you could actually do this for a number of years, but yeah, it's pretty good to finally have this on macOS. Then Safari now lets you see how much websites can actually track you, and I'm pleased to say that we only use Google Analytics for tracking, and just Facebook a tiny bit for that widget that we have on zoneoftech.com, but yeah, we're pretty much tracker-free, unlike many other websites out there. Oh, and speaking of websites, Safari now lets you watch Netflix in full 4K Dolby Vision, uh, as up until now, that was limited to 1080p. And iOS 14 doesn't need support 4K video playback on YouTube, finally. Albeit you have to be watching a 4K HDR video, as you don't really get the 4K option on non-HDR content, at least not at this point. However, I am assuming that this will be fixed, and it seems really likely that we would also be getting 4K support in YouTube on the Mac as well, with Big Sur when that releases. And speaking of Safari, you can now customize the Safari home screen quite significantly. So not only can you now customize the content that it displays by selecting and deselecting categories of items, but you can also have a custom wallpaper in Safari just like you could do in Chrome for quite a few years now. But yeah, still, that's uh, that's pretty cool. And also, Apple will now be including the Safari extensions in the App Store, and we also have a brand new API which developers can use to create and also port uh, extensions from Chrome into Safari. So yeah, Safari is finally becoming more useful, and I'm extremely happy for that, because Safari is way more power efficient and even faster than Chrome is, it's just that Chrome has significantly more functionality than Safari does. I should also point out that I'm absolutely in love with the brand new Mail app. So the UI has been cleaned up substantially, and now all the controls are now on the top right, with the left being reserved for the side panel, just like in Finder. This design actually reminds me a lot of Outlook on the Mac, which actually had one of the very best designs for any Mail app. The Calendar app has been redesigned as well, however, I'm still not a big fan of those pastel colors that the uh, native Calendar app has. I don't know, I've always preferred the look of Google Calendar over the native Apple Calendar, but maybe that's just me. The Messages app also got a new design, which brings it more in line with the iOS version, not just in terms of looks, but also in terms of its functionality. So overall, I am a massive fan of how macOS Big Sur looks, but like I've mentioned before, there are quite a few things that need to be more polished, and I'm hoping that they will be polished by the time macOS Big Sur releases. But in the end, macOS Big Sur isn't just a massive visual upgrade, but it is also a gigantic upgrade under the hood. And that's because this is the very first version of macOS that fully supports ARM processors. Reason why Apple has also called this macOS 11. 
as it simply lays the foundation of all future Macs that will feature Apple processors starting from Q4 2020. Oh, and speaking of that, Windows would no longer be supported. Um, you can still use it on Intel Mac, so Bootcamp will still be supported. However, if you buy an upcoming ARM Mac, you would not be able to install Windows via Bootcamp. You can still install it as a virtual machine, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, once Microsoft implements uh, ARM support for Windows and you can actually install that on any device, then I'm assuming that Windows support will be coming back, but I don't see that happening for at least the next three years. So that's something that you should keep in mind. Now, just as a final note, some of you are probably wondering how is the performance on Mac OS Big Sur. Well, unlike iOS 14, which I actually ended up installing on my own personal iPhone, just because of how stable it was, I just could not do the same with Mac OS Big Sur. Not necessarily because of stability issues, but mostly because of a number of apps that just don't work on Big Sur without receiving an update prior. So a good example is Google Drive File Stream, which we actually use a ton for our workflow. So that one does not work at all on Big Sur at the moment. Uh, also, MailBuckler, a great tool, which I would highly recommend, hashtag not sponsored, uh, for the native mail app on, uh, on macOS. So that doesn't work either, and a few more. Those apps will only get updated closer to macOS Big Sur's release. So yeah, I still have to wait quite a few months until I can actually use Big Sur on my main Mac. Now, Apple, speaking of that, Apple hasn't really told us when macOS Big Sur releases. I would predict the end of October, as you know, the whole COVID outbreak has delayed pretty much everything, to be honest. Um, so I don't really see it launch any earlier than that, but at the same time, I don't see it launch any time later than that. So late October, that'll be my guess. But yeah, let me know in the comments, what do you guys think about Mac OS Big Sur? Do you like the design changes that Apple has implemented, or do you actually prefer the design elements that Mac OS Catalina had? Let me know in the comments, and definitely subscribe, hit the bell icon if you want to see more in-depth tech videos like this one, hopefully was. Become a member if you want to get those really cool badges next to your name in the comment section. And um, yeah, well, this has been actually pretty much it. So give this a like if you've enjoyed it. I'm Daniel. Thank you for watching. This has been Zenoff Tech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zenoff Tech, signing out. Cheers.